situation. So it's, it's not automatic that the debt's going to be canceled. Correct. Uh, you know, depending on the nature of the loan that we can talk about a little bit later. But the, um, whereas though with the foreclosure, at least, uh, as we said, for a first uh, deed of trust, uh, that it, uh, lender it's, it's, is, it's, is stopped from taking further action. It, it's extinguished, correct. Yeah. It's extinguished. Okay. All right. Now, let's say you go through one of these transactions, uh, uh, a short sale, and now the lender issues an information report, a 1099-C form. Mm -hmm. Correct. And so it reports that this debt has been canceled. Is that binding on the lender? Is it binding on the lender? So, so it's been, and I've read this on the internet too, where and I've, I've even had a client who had a real estate agent that says, you've gotten the 1099. And the, 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 and the real estate agent giving legal advice shouldn't shouldn't happen, right? Shouldn't happen, so, right? So the real estate agent says that the lender can't uh, get can't go after you, but that's absolutely not true. Every situation is a little bit different. The 1099 is just simply a report to the government. It's not a declaration. It's not a waiver or some kind of declaration of extinguishment or something along these lines. So, so it's not really a legal document. It's just a report of information. And it doesn't prevent the lender from necessarily taking other actions. Correct, correct. Okay. All right. Well, we were talking about the first mortgage. Uh, so when the first mortgage lender forecloses, does that prevent other junior mortgages? Say you have a, a second mortgage or a, an equity line of credit here. Uh, can they collect their loan still? Right. So, so let's give a real brief example. Let's say that there's a first loan for 300 and a second loan for 100 the second uh, loan is sometimes a home equity line of credit, and sometimes it's just a plain old, you know, closed end loan. And let's say the property, so we got three plus one is 400 debt, and let's say the property is worth two. And, there, and the first says, I, I want to get paid, I want to run through the foreclosure. And, they, and the first loan, the, the 300 guy, he forecloses. The second lender says, you know, I think, it, in, and this is how it typically goes, the second lender is the junior lender. They say, we're just going to wait till it all passes over. So when the foreclosure process ends for the first loan, that means that the first loan is extinguished. The property's gone. The borrower has no obligations on the first loan. Unwittingly, the, sec the, the borrower will often say, well, I lost the house, so the second loan's gone too, and that's not true. The second loan, the 100000 in that example, becomes an unsecured loan, just like a credit card, which means that the lender, the second lender, can sue you in court for up to four years. That thing is going to be an open account for four years unless you compromise. Mm -hmm. Wow. All right. Now, in some cases, I've heard that homeowners can get an advantage uh, when they do this foreclosure process. Uh, that they can stay in their homes rent-free for a period of time. So is that true? Well, I, I think that's true. Let's look at a real simple example. Let's say somebody comes into the office today and, and they're thinking, they come in and they say, my house is worth 300 and my loan's 700 and there's no way that it's ever going to come back to $700. It's, it was one of those things where it just got way too high and everything got out of hand. And and we can't really pay the payment. or It doesn't really make sense. So we think we want to go through a foreclosure or a short sale, but let's just say we all conclude this foreclosure is in their best interest. It's pretty simple. You just do nothing. Mm -hmm. The foreclosure process at a minimum will take about three and a half months, but it usually takes longer. And the real question is, if you just stop paying today, the first missed payment would be August 1st. How long after August 1st will a lender get their acting gear to actually sort of implement this foreclosure. Well, that could be, and I've seen this happen, that could be one to two years from now. And That's meanwhile, you're sitting in the house and you're living in the house. You're not paying taxes. You're not paying the mortgage payment. You're just sitting there. You might, you might pay the insurance, but it's a pretty small price to pay. At any point in time, the foreclosure notice comes, and then you have this statutory three-month cure period plus 21 days. So there is a length of time during which you can live in there is in a sense for free understanding at the end when the foreclosure happens you're going to be out very shortly thereafter right now another concern related to this that uh, I've heard because when I've talked to people about this is they're saying yeah but let's say I do stay there am I going to be able to find a place 
when the, right because right. my credit's going to be all messed up that's that's correct so so here's sort of a catch-22 somebody will come in the office and they'll say well right now i have sterling credit and intellectually it makes no sense to keep going here we, we should stop paying and i always say well where are you going to live uh, so one guy said oh yeah that's right we're not going to have a house he, he was sort of <laughs> yeah. looking at the money only right well, that was silly yeah so the question is can you obtain alternative housing if you go through this so can you buy another house? Most people can't buy another house. They can't qualify for two loans. So they're talking about renting other housing. So the trick is, do you have to rent right away, which means you get zero free time, because you, you stop paying the mortgage, but you go over here and rent, so it's basically uh, the same kind of payment. Or some people figure out a way to live in the house for free under this foreclosure scenario, and then at the end of that time, they can get a replacement house by renting however when they go out on the rental market with tarnished credit then the, the choices are going to be limited number one and the other thing we often forget is in the real world the ideal housing for you depending if you have children school yes. districts that kind of thing you can't necessarily pick up the paper today and have a house tomorrow if you're looking for a specific location that kind of thing right so I always encourage people if they're thinking about self-inflicting which is what they really are doing I say do some market research. Find out what's out there. See what's out there, and and even talk to some landlords and explain to them what's happening. And, mm -hmm. and they, they usually a, a good result will happen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, now, part of the thing related to this, we didn't really have a question related to this, but it seems to me that in many cases the banks aren't in a hurry to move to foreclosure because maybe they already have more properties than they yeah that's yeah want. Yeah, I, I have a lot of people come in to me and they say, you know, we would love to make a deal. You know, my house is in a certain community mm -hmm. and the values went crazy. Now they're not, they're down at a different level. They were 800 and now it's worth 300. My loan is 700. And I just want to make a deal. I just want to have it modified, bring it back, because otherwise I'm going to have to leave and they'll get a property and they're right. not going to get much out of it anyway. It would make sense. I have this theory, however large institutional lenders have a certain capacity for handling these problems. They are beyond their capacity right now because yeah. there's more problems they can handle. Yeah. Also, are they allowed to write down a, a loan institutionally? Are they, they willing to do that now or do they want to do that later? So the top management says, we don't want to take any write downs right now. Mm -hmm. And they tell their, their people in the field, don't do any write downs, don't do any, don't do any arrangements until uh, next quarter, when it would be better for our financial statements. So those are some of the big, the big, the, the borrower, the, frankly, a lot of the homeowners don't really understand because it's the situation is bigger than them. Yeah. Okay. All right. So there's been some publicity related to government plans mm -hmm. promoting loan modifications. Right. How's it been working? Uh, not good. <laughs> um, now, in light of the fact that most of the large financial institutions have paid back their uh, bailout money, mm -hmm. the, the government has little or no leverage over those institutions. They can only shame them, if mm -hmm. you will, in the media. Mm -hmm. uh, and the institutions are going to do what they're going to do. Remember that the chairman of the board and the management team of the institution is primarily beholden to the shareholder of the mm -hmm. institution, which usually is them mm -hmm. as much as anything else. And they're going to do what's best for them sort of politically, public relations wise, financially, and writing down a loan when they don't necessarily have to, uh, which is not in their best interest, is just frankly not going to happen mm -hmm. in many cases. 